So in this next video, we're going to look at creating custom materials in Twinmotion. So to do this, we're going to go and have a look at the Quixel uh, website. Quixel is a company, a really interesting company that do uh, really high quality mega scans and assets for the CGI video game and film industry. And it was actually um, acquired by Twinmotion recently. They joined forces should we say, um, and basically fantastic news, they've made all of their resources available for free. So what this means is you can kind of browse um, all the models and the textures and check out some of the kind of cool things that other people have done with them on the website. You can see very heavily sort of perhaps geared towards the gaming industry, but no reason why we shouldn't use these for architectural visualization. So if we click onto the surfaces in their website, you can see there's some really nice materials and surfaces. Um, they do tend to specialize a little bit more in maybe the naturalistic sort of um, type of materials, but there are lots of kind of um, man-made things as well, like wood, uh, metal, that kind of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and download um, some of the rocks. You can see they're really high quality. And the reason for that is they have a special scanning machine, machine that does 3D scanning. And they basically travel the world. It's a very interesting sort of occupation. Scanning um, materials from all over the place. Here's one from Iceland. You can see an Icelandic rock cliff asset. So we go ahead and download the asset. Um, and essentially, once that's downloaded, it's going to take a little while. We can then load it into Twinmotion. So now we've downloaded the texture from Quixel or any kind of image search really on Google. Let's have a look at how we can create a custom material. So we're just going to drag a primitive object in to begin with. And essentially, let's click the sampler to sample that particular material. Click onto the grid and then click plus to create a brand new material. Now, if we drag that onto the object, you'll see currently it's just white. So if we click more, we can go to the texture channel. We can click open and essentially select from uh, our downloaded images. Let's go to downloads. Let's look into the folder where we downloaded the Quixel uh, resources and we will select the color or diffusion channel of the texture. We'll click open. That will kind of essentially load it in and we can basically drag that onto the object. So now that we've loaded in the texture into the texture channel, we can adjust the luminosity to adjust the brightness or the darkness of that overall texture. That's quite a nice bit of control we have here. Um, we can also adjust the grunge, and we've talked about grunge before, and that's how you can make textures look a lot more kind of weathered and sort of older. So if we click back to new material, we can also adjust the reflectivity. Uh, you won't really see a lot there until you actually get something in the environment. And finally, if we go to the bump channel, what we can actually do clear is click more, um, clear the original uh, bump texture, and actually load in uh, the other bump texture, the normal map, from the Quixel downloaded material. And you should see, if we go back to the settings, we we'll actually basically see a little bit more detail in the texture itself. And let's have a look at that. So slide that bump slider up a little bit. A little bit hard to see on screen, but yeah, that's no, making quite a big difference to the underlying texture. It makes it look a lot more three-dimensional. Um, now, Glow is similar. We can open a Glow map if we have one. Uh, not all materials do, but if you do, that will also kind of add an extra level of detail to your textures that probably you wouldn't have had previously. So well worth doing if you can be bothered with the time. Um, and then again, we can slide in that kind of slider just to introduce that sort of glow into the texture itself using the glow map this time as opposed to just a general uh, level of glow. So all these things make quite a big difference to the material and make it a lot more realistic. Um, finally there's the metallicness uh, slider and we have a, a channel here that we can load in uh, reflection maps or roughness maps and essentially that will also introduce a color map into uh, the metallicness channel so we can kind of click back and slide that to start to get a little bit more detail into how sort of metallic the object actually looks which is kind of nice so when we're ready we can right click uh, rename the material um, let's rename that uh, something appropriate and then right click we can add to our user library and the really nice thing is now we've got that stored away forever in Twinmotion whenever we need it in our user library so let's take a quick look at that. Here we go. Let's bring a primitive in. So next time when we go to our material, we can just drag it straight onto the object and it's fully prepared. 
So that's really cool and it's a really nice way that you can easily build the library. Mm -hmm.